Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and this morning I'm just doing a little uh, impromptu video here. I'm using my new Sony Action Cam which is on a selfie stick uh, and I have no idea what this video is going to look like and I have no idea how this video is going to sound and it may, may end up on YouTube and it may not end up on YouTube but I wanted to kind of show some of you guys uh, that are kind of following, following me with my um, new PreSonus Studio Live 32 that watched my unboxing on my live stream last week um, and since then it's been about a week a week and a half since I've posted any videos and some people are asking me what's the holdup how come you haven't posted anything um, and honestly it's because uh, I actually uh, hurt my uh, shoulder uh, working out the day after I unboxed that video and did the live stream and I pulled all the muscles in my shoulder and in my tricep and I've been kind of down and out for about a week and I'm starting to feel a lot better so now I'm getting back into the studio so I apologize for the delay but I wanted to kind of show you kind of what I'm dealing with and how I'm going to kind of integrate the Studio Live 32 what my current setup is what I'm hoping my new setup will be and kind of to show you around the studio so again this is a brand new uh, Sony Action Cam which is replacing my GoPro which I hated because the sound was horrible and this is the Sony, uh, I think it's called the FX4000 or something like that. It's the new Sony white action cam that shoots in 4K. All my coffee and question videos have been done with this camera, uh, but I've never done it on a selfie stick before and I don't know how it's going to sound, I don't know how it's going to look. I can't see what it's recording, there's no screen on the back. I don't have my iPhone here with my app, so I'm just trying this out. This may make YouTube, this may not make YouTube. I'll have to see what uh, what it looks like when in post and then I'll maybe post this or maybe I won't. So anyway, I apologize for the lighting, I apologize for the video up front, this is an experiment. But some of my hardcore followers kind of want to see my setup and I want to kind of document it and take you through it and kind of show you my room a little bit and show you again how am I going to use the Studio Live 32 because the Studio Live 32 is really a live mixer. It's also made for the studio obviously, hence the name Studio Live. Um, but I'm really going to be using it in the studio in a couple of different ways and I want to show you that now. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn around the camera, I'm going to walk with this on the selfie stick here and see how it looks. Again, I apologize up front for the video, some of you will find interesting some of you may not and if you don't like this kind of video just hit stop now and go on to the next video I get a lot of other great content but I know some of you guys and gals want to kind of see what I'm dealing with so I want to document it for you and try a new way of uh, recording content for you so anyway let me turn the camera around slowly here so again I don't know what the sound is gonna be like here I'm not using any kind of wireless mic this is coming directly off the Sony cam so anyway here is kind of walking in uh, to my studio here and here is kind of um, from the kind of the lounge area kind of the, the kind of a pan shot of the studio so we have my drum kit here uh, over to my Argosy workstation where you see the Studio Live 32 which we'll walk over there in a second um, and then we have uh, kind of over here an area where we you know we do band rehearsal in here as well my band rehearses in here I've said that before on my YouTube channel uh, there's my kind of guitar amp here my Friedman with my Bogner 212 <clears throat> my pedal board and my vocal mic over here is one of my guitars, my new Paul Reed Smith uh, 594 single cut, which is a Les Paul style, brand new by Paul Reed Smith, a beautiful guitar, I really like that guitar, getting used to it. And then my bass player, my buddy John, my good longtime friend John, here's his little bass rig here, his Fender amp here, and his vocal mic here. So we're kind of playing over here, uh, the drummer is kind of over here, my buddy Clyde, a Pearl Export uh, series drum kit uh, in the honey color. Uh, really nice drum kit um, and we're miking that up with just basic uh, mics to do some recording to the Studio Live 32. We have a kick drum mic which is a um, Audix, uh, uh, what is it called? The Audix, is it the D2 kick drum? I forget what it's called. Audix mics, Audix mics on the toms, a Sennheiser mic on the snare, and then the overhead which you can see here which I have mounted on the new tri uh, not new, but on my new Triad Orbit wall mount. Um, overhead, this is a, a Studio Projects B1 large diaphragm condenser mic, like a $115 microphone. Um, really great for overheads and just getting an overall picture of the drum kit. So all of that drum kit and the vocal mics and my guitar amp and the bass going direct is all going into the Studio Live 32. So let me kind of show you over here. And again, I really apologize that the video is terrible here. So here is the Studio Live 32, obviously. And let me just keep the screensaver on to help us with some light. So we have the Studio Live 32 here. Now, again, I've been playing with this now for, again, I, I've been injured. So I haven't really played with this for more than a couple of hours. 
and I'm just doing some basic things to get comfortable with the board and I'm gonna start shooting some videos on how to do simple things like you know a color code tracks and naming tracks and saving scenes and doing basic stuff and we will get to that in, in a bit but this is gonna be obviously the new centerpiece of the studio right we talked about this before so now I have to now integrate this <coughs> into my current setup now my current setup the way I do, have done things up until the Studio Live 32 is I have uh, all, my interface, which is a uh, Universal Audio Apollo, which is the quad system, right? This is a four input interface, okay? <clears throat> and then this would be routed into my Dangerous Music D-Box. Again, forgive all the cables and stuff here. The Dangerous Music D-Box is my analog summing device, which I've talked about quite a bit on my YouTube channel. So basically what happens is, for people who don't know what this is, <clears throat> and this is where I'm struggling a little bit with Studio Live 32, but I'll get it worked out, is that the Universal Audio Apollo, just like the PreSonus Studio 192, think of them as identical types of interfaces because they're set up exactly the same way. Out on, on the back, physically on the back of the Studio Live, uh, excuse me, on the Apollo, there is eight quarter inch direct line outputs. Those outputs go directly into the summing connection or the summing input on the Dangerous Music D-Box. Okay, so from Studio One, if you watch any one of my videos on mixing or any of my Made Easy or Quick Mix products, you'll know that I use a routing system that goes from um, my busing system, which is say drum bus, bass, guitars, keys, vocals. Those go routed um, out to stems and the stems are direct outputs on the back of my interface that are direct outputs set up in the Studio One I.O. preferences window. Those represent the outputs on the Apollo. Okay, those eight outputs go to the summing input on the Dangerous Music D-Box. From the Dangerous Music D-Box, it sums the audio, it sends it through some transformers and some analog goodness, it sums down the audio and brings it back into Studio One on return channel seven and eight. So out of the D-Box, we go back into the Apollo on the input side of channel seven and eight, and that is what gets routed into Studio One. And then from there, I use channel seven and eight, the input as my master bus, and then that audio gets recorded to a print track. And I know that sounds a little confusing if you're not used to analog summing, but analog summing really does make a difference in my mind, and that's why I use it. The other great thing about the D-Box, it's not just a summing device, it's also a complete studio, um, you know, kind of a, a monitoring system. So we have a bunch of different inputs. Again, I don't know how this is going to come out. We have uh, the DAW, which is the sum. We have a, a CD input. We have an analog input for analog devices. We also have um, an alternate speaker setup, which will allow me to send my mix out to a different set of speakers, which I'll talk about in a second. We have a mono button and a talk back with some headphone amplifiers here. And then we have a master control. So not only does it do the summing, it also kind of controls the whole front end of my control room, which is really, really cool. So now what happens, <clears throat> and that's how that kind of works. So one of the challenges that I have with the Studio Live is that the Studio Live, it has direct, it has outputs, it has what's called flex mixes, 16 flex mix outputs on the Studio Live. And I have to get them to, uh, to be, uh, I have to get them to behave like the outputs on the back of the Apollo or the outputs on the back of the Studio 192 so I can go from my Studio Live into my D-Box. So that's my first challenge that I haven't been able to figure out yet is how do I make those 16 outputs on the back of the Studio Live 32, how do I make those direct outs, at least the first eight, the first eight outputs are, or the first eight flex mixes have to become like direct outputs so I can route them into my D-Box. Once I route them into my D-Box, I can then bring them back in, hopefully, on channels. Well, in this case, I'll bring it in on channels, you know, uh, 31 and 32. Just bring them out on these two faders, which is the same as bringing them in on 7 and 8 on my Apollo. I'm going to bring, I'm gonna bring them back in on channels 31 and 32, So that'll be, and then print it to Studio One. So that'll be easy. I'm not worried about that port. Of bringing it back in is easy. The other thing that the Studio Live uh, doesn't have, or, or it does have, it has what's called an AES output, which is, according to the manual, supposed to be like a spitif out, because the spitif out on my Apollo goes into my digital input on my Dangerous Music D-Box. So again, I gotta hook that up the same way. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I have to get the Studio Live 32, all the inputs and outputs routed to the D-Box the same way as my Apollo does, 
so I can have the same kind of workflow. And right now I haven't quite figured that out yet. The manual isn't quite clear, but I am uh, working with tech support and they're going to help me through it. I'm sure we can do it. Um, so that's going to be really cool. And um, I, you know, this mixer can do a ton of stuff. And I used to have before this the 16.0.2, um, which is this is a, this could do a lot more than that mixer could ever do. So I'm sure we'll get all that figured out, and I will document that on video as we do. Okay, so that's kind of how I'm going to integrate for my mixing and my mastering. The other way that I'm going to integrate the Studio Live 32 is for my band rehearsal. As I talked about a few minutes ago, I have drums, guitars, bass, vocals, and such. And we're going to be doing that actually this afternoon, and maybe I'll document that. We're going to be recording that hopefully to the SD card here. We have the SD card, the onboard capture. I'm going to try recording multi-track into uh, the Studio Live 32 because we like to record our rehearsals so we can take those recordings home and just kind of practice to them and kind of listen to them and figure out where we need to improve. So I'm going to be using this um, where I'm going to be setting up a scene um, where I could go in and you can see it here I already have my my band already kind of set up with all the inputs and outputs. You can see how I have uh, all my inputs and outputs set up uh, where I've color coded all my drums. Everything is kind of labeled drums, toms, one, two, three, bass, guitar, vocals. So we have 11 tracks from my rehearsal. Um, and when we, we, we just mic, the only thing we really mic up in this small rehearsal space and put through the PA is the kick drum to get a little bit of bottom end and our three vocals. The rest of this we don't put through the PA in this small little room. There's really no need to. But um, I've gone ahead and I've set up my scene here where I've color coded all my drum tracks green as you can see my bass is blue my guitar is kind of amber and then my vocals are in red and you can see all of that um, even on my kick drum I've gone ahead and had a little low end EQ so I'm working through that to kind of set up a scene because you can set up scenes or presets if you will in the studio live for my band which is going to be different than the than the templates or the presets or the scenes that I do when I mix and master. So I'm kind of going to be setting up this board in a couple of different ways and using them and using the scene section or the presets if you will to um, to choose how my workflow is going to be for whatever I'm going to be doing. So that's the second way I'm going to be using the Studio Live 32 for recording my band rehearsals, which is a really great thing, all in one unit. Now the third thing that I use that I'm going to be using this for is when I'm recording all of my made easy tutorials, quick mix tutorials, YouTube videos where I'm teaching you guys concepts and doing some training in Studio One. Now the way that currently works today is that everything uh, everything is recorded through my Mac and everything is usually recorded into ScreenFlow, which is a screen capture software um, for Mac, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of, very similar to Camtasia that is used for Windows. And um, it's a little weird the way ScreenFlow kind of works. It's not as easy as uh, you would think to get, the, to get your vocal mic, my voice, uh, my overdub, my voiceover, and Studio One into ScreenFlow at the same time and get all the levels kind of balanced. So the way that kind of works today is Again, everything is going from my Apollo to my D-Box, as I said. And out of my D-Box, out of the alternate speaker output, which we talked about earlier, that would normally go to a second set of speakers. My main speakers are my Focals, which are right here. And my alternate set of speakers, which is just a, it's just a copy of the same uh, mix that's going to the Focals, I send that alternate speaker output to a separate mixer today. I'm hoping to use the Studio Live 32. And what I send that to today, <clears throat> excuse me here, um, is an Allen & Heath uh, ZED-10Z10 uh, little small mixer. And what that does is it allows my alternate speaker output on my D-Box comes into uh, channel, uh, what's this channel, uh, stereo 1-2. So I have the left and the right coming in. That goes um, for my, this. so this is everything you hear coming out of studio one comes into here comes out of the out of the alternate speaker output on the D box into the input of this mixer. My voice would come over either my headset mic or my Shure SM7B for my voiceover. That comes into channel one here, and I blend these two channels together. And that is a US. This is also a USB mixer. So this USB output goes to my Mac, and ScreenFlow, the input of ScreenFlow is this USB mixer. So now I can blend Studio One with my voiceover mic. Okay, and here's the input from my voiceover mic. It's the only way to really do it. Um, I can't, 
Uh, so I have to use a separate USB interface mixer here in order for ScreenFlow to capture it in a way where I can blend these two sources together so you can hear my voice, you can hear Studio One and everything sounds balanced. I'm hoping to be able to eliminate this piece of gear and do everything through the Studio Live 32. Um, the reason why um, I could not do without that Allen and Heath mixer and just use the outputs of the Universal Audio Apollo, you'd say, well, why can't you just use your, why do you have to use a separate mixer? And the reason for that is, is because I have to, I cannot record my voiceover mic through Studio One without getting latency. Because when you put a bunch of plugins and such on your Studio One session, if I use an input uh, in Studio One to record my voiceover when all the plugins are there and I'm talking back there's a latency problem again I can't really describe that in this video it would take way too long but just trust me it doesn't work that way so this is kind of a workaround where I have to run everything into a separate USB mixer and then run that into ScreenFlow so ScreenFlow and DAW Audio doesn't work very well together you always have to do a workaround to get it to work right and every setup is a little different and that how and it works this is what really works for me now what's underneath this is um, a new piece I got the ART voice channel live uh, this is um, where my mic my voiceover mic goes into this this is pretty much a vocal channel strip where it has a, a preamp it has a compressor a de -esser, an EQ section and so my voiceover mic goes into the ART and then from there it's going over to the input here okay so my mic is not plugged directly into the Allen and Heath it used to be once I got the ART my voice goes through the ART into the USB mixer and then again this all goes into screen flow and it actually works really really well I can actually leave this setup if I can't get the studio live 32 to do what I what I want I'd love to be able to patch everything into the studio live 32 um, and not have to have a separate USB mixer and 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 so but we'll have to see how that kind of works out We'll just you know I got to take this one step at a time because my workflow is a little different than what most people are doing So I guess the moral of my story for everyone here is that when I record I'll turn my camera around here so when I record my YouTube videos and I do my training products, the audio in the video have to be routed kind of a certain way through my Mac and through ScreenFlow. When I'm record, when I'm just doing mixing and mastering and I'm not recording videos, well, the routing of the audio and such is done a little bit differently. I don't need the Allen and Heath mixer. And when I'm recording my band and doing stuff here, then I don't, you know, the, again, the audio routes a little bit differently a third time. So. Um, trying to get all the different ways that I do things and all the different ways that I try to deliver content to you, I want it to all kind of run through the Studio Live 32 and that's what I'm kind of hoping can be done. The other thing I didn't mention is now I'm doing live streaming as some of you know and now I have a new piece of software called Wirecast which is a live streaming software which is another <laughs> way that's a little different than when I work with ScreenFlow and it's a little different when I'm to when I'm recording my training products and YouTube videos. So that's a fourth way of the way I'm trying to route audio and it's all going to be slightly different and I'm hoping everything can go through the Studio Live 32 and I can save each one of those scenarios, if you will, as a scene or as a preset in the Studio Live 32 so I can just call up that scene and all my audio will be routed the way it's supposed to be depending on what I'm going to be doing. And I'm sure that can probably be done, I just haven't figured it all out yet and I am about a week behind and I apologize. <clears throat> excuse me but I wanted to kind of just show you my setup and show you kind of what I'm doing and how I plan to use the Studio Live 32 what little I've played with this mixer so far before I injured myself it's really really cool um, I've been using the manual I've been going through some of the functions I've been writing ideas of video ideas I'm gonna have for you guys to show you the basic stuff and I think what I'm gonna create is kind of like a beginner's guide and I know some pre sodas has already done some really great videos but I want to show you videos on how I'm going to use the mixer. So we'll do everything from, we've already done the unboxing, we'll do a, 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 you know, a firmware update, I'll show you how to format the SD cards, I'll show you how to set up a basic template, I'll show you how to set up presets or scenes, I'll show you how to color code the scribble strips and name tracks. I think we're going to do kind of like a beginner's guide, kind of like what I did for the Studio One beginner's guide on the, on, out on my YouTube channel. And I'll create a new playlist called Studio Live 32 Beginner's Guide. And I'll just walk you guys through it. And some of you will find it helpful. Some of you may say it's too basic. And as I get more familiar with the Studio Live 32, and as I find myself 
using it in different ways. I'll try to document all that stuff uh, so you guys will have that all in a simple playlist. So I hope that's cool. I hope you guys like that. If you have any ideas uh, of what else you want me to do, please leave them below in the comments or send me an email uh, at info at homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I'll try to incorporate all of that. Uh, the last thing I want to kind of show you too is that, again, I talked about live stream and Wirecast and uh, some of the things I want to try to be able to do. And I'm trying to set up my live streams and, my, and, my, and even my future training videos uh, in a way where I'm going to have multiple cameras so you can see, and I'll turn it around again, you can see the Studio Live 32 maybe with the camera that I'm recording this video on, the little Sony action cam on a tripod. And then I have my, uh, my Panasonic normal HD camcorder which I use for a lot of current videos. That'll be a second camera. And then my webcam, which is up here on my monitor, that'll be a third camera. So my goal is to have kind of a three camera, maybe even at one point a four camera shoot where I can have one camera kind of shooting over the top of the studio live, something like this. Again, I don't know what this looks like right now because I'm just doing this on the fly. Maybe have a camera overhead on the studio live 32 maybe have a second camera kind of up here on the screen so you can kind of see what I'm doing on the screen. Then I'll obviously have a screenshot of Studio One on my, on my display and then you'll be able to see me in the webcam. So you can kind of really get a feel for what I'm doing and how I'm kind of doing things, especially once the Studio Live 32 becomes a, a surface control for Studio One, which I know it's being worked on, it's not ready yet. So I can't really show you that part of it, but I can show you, again, uh, some of the other ways that I'm using the Studio Live 32. So uh, I think I'll end this video now because it's probably way too long and it probably looks horrible and this probably will never make YouTube anyway. Again, this is my first time using a, a selfie stick and a little action cam and I'm just experimenting with different cameras and different ways of doing things to try to give you guys better content and I'm using these little, you know, kind of uh, into impromptu videos as kind of like a test to see how does this work, what works, what doesn't work. I don't know what the lighting looks like in here. This is kind of how I have my studio set up. It's all dimly lit and this is how I like to work and I don't like a lot of bright lights and I don't like a lot of LED lights and stuff so I want to try to set the mood from what I'm for what I'm working and try to be able to still give you good quality content so I'm experimenting with different cameras different lenses I've you know bought GoPros and returned them and bought Sony action cams and I'm trying to do a bunch of stuff because as this channel continues to grow I want to give you guys better content I mean it's all about trying to make this channel better to give you better quality content more interesting content and things that will really help you um, and more importantly show you kind of how I work because a lot of people ask me about that but some of this stuff is a uh, is a work in progress and I'm learning as I'm going I don't have a team of people here I'm a one-man show as a mo as a lot of you know so I'm learning this stuff as I'm going this whole uh, uh, education and, and, and way of doing things is much different than what I'm used to doing and I'm learning. So hopefully you guys, I know a lot of you guys are patient. I appreciate you listening to me ramble. And uh, if there's anything else you want to see in my studio, just let me know. Um, and hopefully this little action cam works out good because this is a good way where I can just fire it up, put it on a little stick and kind of walk around and show you things. So you'll have to let me know how is the video. If it makes it to YouTube, it's probably not too bad. So anyway, this has been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Again, for more tips, tricks, concepts, and training around everything home recording, be sure, as always, head out to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Please check out the Made Easy series and the Quick Mix series. Sign up for the VIP email list. You'll get special pricing on all my training products uh, in the future, and I'm constantly putting my products on sale, and it's only made available to the VIP members. It's usually never made to the general public, so you'll get special pricing that nobody else will get, so you may want to do that. It's right on the homepage. Go check it out. Also, go to Facebook. Follow me on Facebook. Go to Twitter. Find me on Twitter. Follow me there, and uh, as always, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already, and I'll do, be doing more training uh, very, very soon. So again, thanks for being patient. Thanks for uh, indulging me through my little experimentation here, and I will speak to you guys all soon. Take care.